Okay. Here we go. Right. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, save. Come on, save. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to do that again. Stop letting me do it. Okay, and save. Set. All right, so now as you can see, on the front of the wiki space, um, on the Google Hangout, it's, it's just a little bit of a delay, but shortly it'll be live. And the audience can now watch us from the front, okay, as it comes through. I'm going to leave that because I need to keep moving, see? So we're now live from the on the website. But what happens is we're like about, so those of you there, things like, you know, don't scratch your nose and stuff, because it's quite <laughs> obvious. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. You realise that, that, that we are recording. <laughs> so I'm going to shut that for now because otherwise we get a distraction and if you're on Google I'm going to ask you not to show that page um, because if you're following me on Google you'll see it and it just it just creates more of a, a challenge okay well welcome everybody I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move away just for a minute now Cool, cool, cool. Well, I um, am a colleague of Sonia's and I just wanted to introduce um, Sonia. She is a teacher at Newmarket Primary School and she helps us um, out with lots of different things, ICT-wise and e-learning-wise, and she's going to talk to us today about um, Google Hangouts. Thank you, Tash. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Sorry, guys, now you didn't see me. Uh, we're a little bit behind there, so now I'm just going to go and grab my PowerPoint and so get started. Um, so give me a second, I'm just going to screen share now. Okay, okay, and minimize that one. I know, ignore that, it just looks a bit strange for a minute. Um, and now. And uh, this is real geek stuff, eh? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, all right, I'm ready to start. Um, Can I ask those of you who are on, I'll just go back to the Hangout, those of you on the Hangout, if you are, okay, can, can, some, can you leave your sound off but turn your microphone on and can some, if I'm not, if it's not showing, can somebody just sh um, tell me because once I get out of here you won't be able to see it. Okay. All our sales, we let them continue because they're well organised. And okay, right, I've started. I hope my presentation is coming through. Oh, great! Here we go. <laughs> That's all right then. All right, kia ora, and welcome to everyone who has joined us in Teach Me NZ live streamed from ULEARN 2013. Welcome everyone, and we've already had a screen bump of everybody involved, and we'll take another one at the end. Um, the format for this Hangout is, I'll go first, I always get to go first, it's the good thing about being the mediator, and share the journey, it's only three minutes, that's all you get to hear from me because we know about when we're on YouTube that we don't sit through a whole session, you know, we just skip through bits that we want, so, this is, so I understand about that, so it's real short. Um, today we're going to try something a little different, in that we're presenting before a live audience, so you learn audience, I'm really excited that you're here with me. I'm asking that please don't go to the Teach Me NZ website just yet because we're, we're conscious about bandwidth and I don't want a big crash. Um, please do use Twitter on your broadcast and do broadcast Teach Me NZ. We have a second special edition today in that we're trialling Chatwing. So those of you who are a virtual audience, under the news Teach Me NZ wiki space, there's a place for question and answers. 
And we've got Manel, who's on standby to answer questions where she can. That's who's missing. Manel, why aren't you in the Hangout? I invited you. Um, if we have any challenges, then the presenters have uploaded their presentation to SlideShare, and you can still follow. And we'll continue to use Google Audio. Okay. The next part of the session is the live Hangout. So here's the overview. They're the most important part of the presenters. So there's five of them today. And we've got one guest coming in from Croatia when she wakes up from her afternoon nap because she's just come through from Chicago, and that's Ariana. I'm going to go over the history. And then when the presenters have finished, they're going to leave us and come back to us by creating Hangouts for you to join, those, of the, those who have offered to do that job with me. And if anyone is here has a little bit of knowledge about Google Hangout, I'm going to also ask you to help me by creating Hangouts, but we'll talk about that next. Then we're going to identify other tools for collaboration. There's question and answer, and I'm going to ask you before you leave this room at quarter past 12 to fill in the evaluation form. Okay, I'm going to aim to be finished by quarter past 12, so that means it gives me about you know, a few minutes for you to fill in your form before you take off for lunch and get there early. Um, so before I, I've, I've embedded the wiki, I've embedded the presentation, and while I'm doing that, I want you to turn to somebody you don't know and say hello. <laughs> as, Mark, as Mark Pesky was saying this morning, is that um, you know it's about the mo the mentors that we have. So some of you are thinking, oh my god, what have I let myself in for this afternoon, this morning? Don't panic. You've got mentors all around you. I've got two here as well. So here's my presentation. Teach me as part of an ongoing learning with high connectivity that that I began as a court education e fellow in 2011. Solo allowed me to identify that it extended abstract. I needed to create an event for teachers. So this is it. This is my creation. Um, Solo allowed me to rethink the ways that teachers can share learning and has framed my next steps, which I recently carried out as part of a teaching sabbatical where I got to travel around the world. That's another presentation. Today, I will share the story briefly around setting up Teach Me and Z. And I've got a fuller version where I shared on the virtual learning so you can watch a video, um, which is a bit longer. And to begin with, I want to quote Ewan McIntosh, who talks about that Teach Me is not about the technology; it's about the tech first. It's not a, it's about the, sorry, it's not about the technology, but the tech is instrumental to achieving what we want to achieve pedagogically, and never the other way around. So New Zealand, part of Teach Me Z, is aimed for New Zealand educators. And the virtual is the online part. Now, I don't know if Ariana's joined me, um, but I'm hoping that she is. She's coming through from Croatia, and she promised me she'd be here. Now, Ariana is my, is my um, mentor virtually, and she's a person who's really extended me as an, as an online, um, to use online in, in a more effective way. And everything I do on Teach Me Z, I learned from her. So during the session, of TeachMeet International when I first joined, Ariana had technical problems. And we all flicked onto SlideShare and presented virtually on another platform and used the audio on Illuminate. And that's where the Google Hangout for me started the idea. Because if you use Blackboard, you've got to pay for that, but Google's free. So that kind of how that all started when, she, when we had technical problems on another site. Two weeks later, I was at Ignition with Mark Osborne, and um, uh, something was happening in the afternoon. I thought, nah, don't want to do that. And my principal always said, if you don't like it, create your own. So I said, oh, anybody want to have a look at Google Hangouts with me? And um, six, six people put their hand up, and we met in a corner, and we talked about Google Hangouts, had no idea what to do. And so I, I put the idea that I wanted to run a Hangout online using TeachMeet International format. So some of them agreed to it, and I shoulder tapped the others. So the people you see there are my very first TeachMeet and Z group. 
The first session we live streamed, we had 54 live views. So on the front of the wiki space, we had 54 views. Uh, the second one, we had 130. This one, I'm aiming for 200. So we, even though here we're a small audience, using this format, you can get your message out to a much larger audience. So those, this group here, they helped me um, sort out all the gl glitches, because you really need mentors to help you sorting out glitches if you don't know what the heck you're doing. And we didn't. We had no idea what we're doing. YouTube was fantastic. Um, over time, this is what we ended up implementing, the tools that we used to implement the project. We had um, Google Hangouts, we had SlideShare, Twitter, and Wikispaces. Now, my first session, the week before we went live, I lost a presenter. This, the day before I went live, I lost another presenter. And the same things happened this round as well. So technically, you, things do happen. Now, the aha moment came when we did our first session, quickly saw the potential of using Google, um, this Google tool for blended learning and a way for teachers to share their learning. Because as Mark said this morning, sharing is the important part. Um, and one of the expressions to it, the Google Summit I attended um, just two weeks ago, that if you don't share, you're being selfish. Now, now TeachMeet has been successful in that there is now a space where New Zealand teachers can come together and share their learning. And today, these are our presenters. Uh, we've just lost one, but it's okay. We can keep going. And I've got my now. She's on standby. She's going to be watching the um, chat wing on the front of the wiki space. So, for presenting, they will receive a digital badge for their um, portfolio, and I'll create for them a video of their presentation using Google. This is our third session that we've run this year, um, and I'm so proud to welcome the stunning lineup that we have today. When I'm finished, I'm going to call on the virtual um, our presenters to wave to the audience, and I'm going to ask all of the presenters to turn off the microphones and camera because I'm really conscious about bandwidth. So when you do that, it's a bit scary. You feel like you're presenting to in a closet. You can't hear or see anybody. You can't see reactions. Um, but we'll definitely give them a clap at the end. Um, and those of you here, please use TeachMeetNZ if you're tweeting. Really appreciate it. So I'm now going to pass you over to our first presenter. And I'll call on Chris. Are you, are you ready? Um, I've the order of today has been randomly selected using another tool which I'll talk about before. So I'm now going to get out of here. And I'm going to go back to my Hangout. Um, and I'm going to turn off my slide share. And I'm going to turn off my camera. I hope that the presentation went through OK, people. Was it all right? Can you give me a thumbs up? Oh, good. So that was fine. Because I, I feel like I'm presenting in the dark because I can't see them. I, I, I'm getting my reaction from you. OK, Chris, are you ready? Chris, are you ready? OK, off you go. Um, can you hear me OK, um, Sonia? Yeah, we can. I'm going to turn the sound up, Chris. I'm going to ask the other presenters to please turn off your cameras and your audio. I'll keep the audience so at least you feel like you're talking to somebody because the sound <laughs> is off. I'm turning up the sound. Hang on. All right, off you go, Chris. Can you see my slides okay there, full screen? Yes. Great. Okay. So, hi there. My name's Chris Swanick and I'm one of a couple of blended e-learning facilitators that I know that you've already had on Teach Me NZ, Sonia. So I'm really pleased to be with you for this special e-learn edition. E-learning for me has always been about using the tools to make learning more student-centered. And around three or four years ago, I rediscovered this part of my practice by creating screencasts using Camtasia on the PC, publishing them to a class Facebook page with accompanying notes from lessons in SlideShare. This presentation, though, is about my master's, which hopefully I'll finish in the next few weeks. <clears throat> so, 
So the title is, Is Social Media Facilitating a Shift Towards Student-Centered Modes of Learning in an Auckland Secondary School? And I'm in the process of writing at the moment, so this is going to be a little abridged, but I thought I'd share a few preliminary findings with you here and a little bit about where my current thinking is at. One of the things I've noted from the reading is that the use of social media tools really builds on the existing traditions in learning theory that we already have. We're all familiar with Piaget, amongst others, and I'm sure Nolene Wright from the University of Waikato will be happy to see me quote her here on how social networking tools really mirror learning experiences that are collaborative and interactive, which makes them a very student-centered way to learn. It's widely acknowledged that New Zealand has made a very strong contribution to futures thinking research globally. And so I use the six themes of the NZCER Supporting Future Oriented Learning and Teaching Report to help me structure data collection. We use the six themes as a lens to help visualize the type of learning that we're aiming for by integrating more e-tools. And I wanted to know whether social media had become or um, was becoming integral to the way that we build these types of learning experiences for students. So diagrams like this are usually the product of sitting up late at night on your own, trying to make some sense of what you're reading and to find some patterns in it. And I also started to reach the conclusion that it seems we're at a convergence point now, with the tools allowing for more social interaction in online spaces, and how that fits with what we've always known about learning happening best in social contexts. The methodology involved surveying student and teacher attitudes around social media against the six future themes, and I also wanted to do some interviews to build some personal narratives about how they were being used. So here's an example of some data from the teacher's survey. 70% of staff in the school responded, which is fantastic for an online survey and really lends reliability. This shows the seven questions I asked just around theme one, personalizing learning. The ideas along the bottom there include offering students choice in what and how they learn, shifting the locus of control to the student, and genuine differentiation. You can see the approval rate in the blue bars and the gloss for agree and strongly agree total around 70 to 80 percent for each question. This indicates a very high approval rate amongst teachers for social media tools helping them to offer deep personalization to students. I'm going to finish up now with this quote from Tim Berners-Lee, the founder of the internet, about its true nature and how the emergence of the social component of the web is really in line with what the internet was always supposed to be. And that's me. I would strongly encourage people to check out the Supporting Future Oriented Learning and Teaching report. Um, it was authored last year by Rachel Bolstead and Jane Gilbert. And you can also have a read of my blog or throw me a follow on Twitter. Thanks very much. Um, Chris, that was great. You sharing your master's um, learning. And for the audience who are looking really in thought, the opportunity happens later when you can rewind what Chris has just said on YouTube. So you can go back and have a look at it. Thank you so much. Uh, could I have the other presenters please just show your faces and just give Chris a thumbs up or something so he's got a bit of feedback. Great. Well done. Okay, I don't have my list with me. I can't remember who's number two. Well done, Chris. Give him a, <laughs> give him a hand. Give him a clap. Okay, well all right. Um, remember, we're going to leave all the questions to the end. We're using chat wing. So you can find chat wing on the... Um, but we'll talk about that next. So do we access it now? Um, who was number two? I can't remember. Who's it's number me. two? Melanie. Okay, Melanie, you're next. All right, can I ask the presenters to turn off your microphones and your cameras again and let Mel go? Go, Mel. Can you hear, can you hear me okay, Sonia? Yeah, we can. Okay. I'm just, when you're ready, bring up um, screen share, bring up your presentation, Mel. I'm going to turn off my microphone now, Mel, so you're in the dark. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Okay, hi, I'm Melanie Matthews. I'm a Year 5-6 teacher, Deputy Principal, ICT Lead Teacher of Broadland School. 
I want to share with you today a part of my journey using SOLO to engage my students in reflection to help them identify next learning steps. What I'm going to share today is a method I use to engage my students in raising their level of questioning around their own inquiries using SOLO. SOLO, Structure for Observed Learning Outcomes. It's a simple structure for three different levels of understanding, surface, deep and conceptual. Just sharing stuff isn't okay anymore because we can Google everything. Google is an amazing tool that has loads of stuff. So I wanted my students to use the stuff that interested them and think about their ideas in a new and different way. I was hoping their understanding of Solo would help this. I use Solo to help them question above and beyond just stuff, to help them capture their audience within and beyond their classroom when they shared the results of their own inquiry. Our class mantra became, tell us something different. So we began a mini inquiry which was technology based and embedded in this was the concept of inventions and in design. The students were already excited because they had researched local inventors and invited a real inventor into their classroom. So they began by writing their own questions on sticky notes and placed these where they thought they belonged within the solo framework. This is where some good conversations began about the types of questions they were writing. We soon realised we needed to unpick the language within the thinking maps aligned with SOLO. In groups, the students began to explore, define, describe and draw the different words associated with the thinking around the levels, for example, sequence, evaluate, predict, etc. Once the class had explored and shared their ideas around the language, they were challenged to write questions using another level of solo to guide this, to raise their thinking and challenge their inquiry. This is where it became challenging for the students, as the questions were raising the level of thinking. So the thinking maps were now being used and collaborative groups were formed naturally. At this point, students needed to be encouraged to give evidence for their thinking. For example, predictions on robots of the future needed to have supporting evidence for their thinking. I was very pleased with the extended thinking that was developed within the students based on their new questioning skills. I now realise there's a need to facilitate more thinking around the relational and extended thinking maps, particularly with giving evidence to their think for their thinking. I believe SOLO is a great tool for many ped pedagogical reasons, but in this story it helped my students to learn how to learn and think about their thinking. Okay, again I ask um, presenters to please show your faces and give Mel a thumbs up. Mel, thank you for sharing your SOLO journey. That was, that was wonderful. Newmarket School is a SOLO school and so we always are interested to hear what other schools are doing with SOLO. Thank you for sharing. Pleasure. Big hand everybody. <laughs> and number three, who have we got? You're looking at me blind. I think it's you. <laughs> I think it was you, Hannah. Are you ready to go? She's number four. Oh, you're number four. Okay, who's number three? Who just fell off? Oh, he's coming in. Chris is coming in. Why? Because he's, he's presenting from downstairs. Um, Chris? Oh, I get that. Can I, um, can I ask either Tim or... Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Who will go third? Who will go third? Hannah, will you go third? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm going to make you go third, Hannah. Right, you're number three. Cool. Um, everybody, please turn your cameras and mics off, please. Left screen share, Hannah. The green button. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you, Hannah, but we can't see your screen yet. Oh, yes, here you come now. Okay, I'm turning my sound off. Okay. Can you see my slides now? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can. Right, go for it. Cool. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. I am New Zealand born Yuan, 2011 core education e fellow and an early childhood teacher, currently working with two to three and a half year olds at Eastern House Preschool in Korea. 
And can we talk about the lab? Please talk about the lab. 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 So my background of early childhood is from New Zealand. These photographs share an insight of Tots Corner, where I spent the last six years exploring the principles of Reggio Emilia. Reggio Emilia is a city in Italy who are renowned for their early childhood education. For so long, I've wanted to continue traveling and look at combining this with teaching abroad. This year, it wasn't just about moving early childhood centers. I was moving to a whole new country. Living the cultural lifestyle as an expatriate in Korea. Which brings me to my presentation today. Something I'm very passionate about is I feel it plays a huge role in classrooms today. As a team, we pondered possibilities, yet we were questioned with our ambitious ways with how and why. How are we going to shift the classroom design? So there was a lot of doubt and worry from families with the classroom we had chosen because of its physical space in the school and the lack of non-design it had. Even though it was very early days, we kindly reassured families that we were not shifting classrooms. As a team, we believe the classroom environment should reflect teachers and values and shape the identity of who you are in your community. Acknowledging the environment's role as the third teacher it is more than just some furniture and paintings on the wall to make it look nice. This should be aesthetically pleasing for teachers and children. So we envisioned a design for our blank classroom. She had ideas of how we could transform this fantastic learning space. In saying that, it was also about educating families on the importance of classroom design. The change over eight months shows an evolving process of children's work materials and values that grace the wall of our classroom design. The parents have shared their thoughts on not only how the classroom has blossomed, but are amazed at their work that their children are producing. We've been inspired by this train of thought, looking at our class as that blank canvas of life ready to be splashed with our exciting and creative ideas. It is indeed a process, something that has reflected back to our community as the essence of our vision. I think there were a lot of puzzled people wondering why I was getting rid of furniture in a class that somehow needed it, which to me was obviously unnecessary clutter. We had a clear motive in mind, and we were determined to see it through. So despite the obstacles and challenges, we have strived to voice our values in designing a classroom which can foster children's creativity and imagination. Advocating the importance of play and emphasizing its role in early childhood education. One space we now call the studio acts as the third teacher for our two to three and a half year old children. We are part of a process that has enabled us to shift the thinking within our community and share the importance of classroom design for our most youngest learners. I am going to post a link to this presentation on why it's sort of because I'm still getting there. Thank you. Okay, everybody, could you please um, put your hands together for Hannah. Oh. Hannah, Hannah farewelled me last Tuesday from Korea at 5 a.m. in the morning. She got up to say goodbye. So I had the honor of visiting her early childhood center and saw the before and after photos. Thank you, Hannah, for joining us. Hannah and RBE Fellows in 2011. And we now welcome Tim Gander, your other next up. And also, while you're getting yourself ready, we congratulate you on being selected to be an E Fellow for 2014. So, Tim, over to you now. Um, Thanks very much, everyone. Turn off your um, cameras, please. Oops, I've lost my sound. How's the sound? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, the sound's good. Okay, well I'll just start to share my screen then. Kia ora everyone anyway, and um, I'm speaking from sunny Gisborne today, it's a lovely day. Um, Chris, sorry Tim, can you speak up a bit louder? We, whether I'm just dominating the mic, we need to speak up quite loud. Okay, is that a bit better? A little bit, more, more. <laughs> All right. 
I'll, um, I'll try and talk a bit louder and enunciate. Okay, um, is that okay, Sonia? Can you let me know if you can hear me okay? I've come away from the mic, so don't keep knocking back to me. You're on your own now. We can hear you fine, and the screen's actually okay, fine, so go for it. Lovely, thanks very much. Okay, so just a quick bit of background about my experiences this year. I've used Google Apps for Education since about 2009 and experimented with different learning activities in the classroom and with staff, but this year I've decided to completely immerse all of my NCEA PE classes into the cloud. Um, I recently completed an inquiry into the whole process and sought feedback from the students, teachers, whānau, um, and everyone involved, and the following slides are just about my main findings. That QR code is a link to my blog where you can find quite a bit of the information. Um, so there's a slight problem, uh, there was a slight problem at our school, and in the beginning, um, I'm getting quite a bit of echo. <laughs> I can just hear myself again and again. I, I'll tell you what, I'll take my headphones out. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, I'll go again. So we only had a library really with about 13, 13 um, working RM Nimbus machines and another room with about the same number of slow desktops. So logging on and availability were a problem and enough to put the keenest of teachers off using the machines. But I persevered and initiated a flipped classroom at the start of the year and involved students and whānau with the learning as well as allowing students to bring devices. And I set up my own pirate network, don't tell anyone, um, but I allowed students to access a hotspot from my computer and then they could access the Wi-Fi. Halfway through the year, I secured funding from um, Coreb Māori Grant, and I bought half a class set of Chromebooks, which made things a lot easier. Um, some of the reasons why I decided to digitise the NCAPE programme are on the screen, but I've got about a minute and a half left, so I'm be terminated and turned into a blank screen if I don't hurry up. There's a uh, quick QR code about some of the findings, but I will um, carry on talking about that. So the main thing the students said was that they benefited from the teacher being available and reachable and I saw students online after I'd emailed them a homework task and through Google Apps you can have a quick chat with them and see them when they're online and you can um, type a quick how's it going and they might have a question or need help and they can quickly reply to you. Um, I didn't take it as far as having a hangout with the students but next year I'm thinking of having a session in the holidays before some coursework's due in and after talking to Sonia about this, she suggested that it would be good if it was recorded and this would allow rewindable learning and they could go over it again. And obviously this allows students to take learning outside the classroom. I did speak to some teachers who said that they didn't want to be contacted by um, students after school, but I feel if we're expecting to do homework and complete work in their own time, I think we should be available to help them and guide them as well. Um, the tools available now allow for ubiquitous ac access and I think we should use them. Um, I'm really passionate about my students doing well, so I didn't mind them contacting me most of the time. Although it did make it tricky when I was trying to juggle bathing the kids, um, my kids, not the students, and replying to an email about the Krebs cycle. But I guess you could schedule windows and different times for you available for contact. The second main finding was enhanced collaboration. And this really links to the aspects of communication from the last slide. Because if you can't collaborate, you're not communicating. So I made a real point of making the learning public and accessible. I tried hard to celebrate successes and encourage praise and involvement from Farno. Um, I used Google Plus as a channel to share work and experiences with the Level 2 class. And I had an email from a mum who was ecstatic that her son was proud of the work he'd been doing and showed his older sister and other family members with images from the lesson. And this is a 17-year-old boy who had a meeting at the start of the year with senior leadership team and teachers as he wasn't working and he's been encouraged to leave the school. So it made a real difference to his attitude towards school. There's just a couple of quotes from the parents. Um, the way that I shared a lot of this learning was through um, an online mark book and it's perhaps the most valuable way I integrated technology and it allowed students to see what they'd done and where they were going and pinpoint and build on strengths of each student as well as identifying and address the learning needs in a clear and constructive way. Um, I guess next year you can use the data to plan and modify the learning program for individual students and you can also use learning analytics which is part of the Google Apps um, suite. But a lot of the parents just, just real keen to keep an eye on the, on the students and not let them pull the wall over their eyes. Um, the thing which was the, probably the main <coughs> um, finding for me was always just have a backup plan and 
um, quite often the plan didn't come together and I learned that you, you can't take these mishaps as failures and feel defeated. Um, quite often they might be out of your control and the infrastructure wasn't that reliable and let me down quite often. Um, because of this I learned to have a backup plan. If you're using the SAMR model to integrate the technology and it's quite hard to replicate the planned lesson, but especially if you're at the modification and redefinition phase, but you need to have a batch of lessons up your sleeve or um, just go out for a game of touch, which is what I did a few times, because spending the lesson logging on and connecting to the internet is no fun for anyone. It makes it feel like you're walking uphill through glue back, backwards. Um, I also had a couple of lessons where using the technology and the lesson was completely sabotaged. I attempted to use a collaborative mind map called Lucid Chart to work out what society was, but my year 11s worked out that you could also insert images. So at the end of a lesson, one group had deleted everyone's work and covered the collaborative sheet with pictures of rainbow sports cars and sheep. Um, maybe it's an abstract view of society, but I had to have a quiet word with them afterwards and then realize that the activity hadn't been completely successful. Just because it worked with the year 12 class didn't mean it worked with the year 11. But this is a part of the refinement process we will do automatically as teachers and without pushing the boundaries we won't gain new ground and understanding. Um, just some QR codes there, I probably won't be able to scan them all because they might be too big on the screen but it's just only a brief overview, I'm sorry I spoke so quickly, so quickly. but um, uh, just, just have, a, uh, have a look at those sites and get in touch or email me if you've got any questions about, about that. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks Tim, big hand for Tim everybody. Um, could we have all the... <laughs> and Tim, I'm sitting there debating. You, you were um, time-wise, but I'll let it go today because <laughs> we've lost a presenter. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love that. That's something you'll learn when you work with Michael. He'll, he'll sort that out for you. <laughs> but yeah, big hand from both Tim, everyone. And an extra big hand. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations on being an e-fellow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chris, you're up next as our lucky last. So um, everyone else, um, cameras and microphones off. I'll leave my microphone on until you sit, Chris. Okay, thanks, Sonia. Thanks. Right, um, are we seeing me? Are we seeing me? Yes, we are. Everything's fine. I'm going to turn my sound off now Great. and you can go. Morena, my name is Chris Dillon. I'm a uh, teacher in charge of digital, te te digital technology at Pataru College in the Waikato. My Twitter handle is one mouse, and I'm talking to you today from Cambridge. My topic is digital badges, an online standard to recognise and verify learning. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to say this is not in any way finished. This is an ongoing um, investigation for me, um, and I currently don't have any data that I can really back this up with. But as a teacher, one of my roles is to promote student motivation. Educational psychologists identify two basic motivators, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic, the desire to learn due to inherent interest for self-fulfillment or enjoyment. Teachers who use reinforcements wisely can use extrinsic motivators as well to help them to um, when effort is required, but only really if the desired goal sits within the child's reach. Extremes motivators should have the goal to help students develop an inner desire to do well. Point systems, success charts, or treats are class-centered motivators. Uh, a digital badge, I believe, um, has the ability to be earned outside of traditional class environment and can be carried over year on year and beyond school and have the value added um, on top of our traditional skills. Badges and here I'm generally referring to the open edge framework, uh, is non-proprietary. It's free software, an open and technical standard. Badges can be collected from multiple sources on and offline into a single area called a backpack and then used to display your skills and achievements on social network profiles, job sites and other websites. They build upon each other stacking to tell the full story of your skills and achievements. Open badges are also data rich, each embedded with metadata that links back to the issuer, the criteria and the verified evidence. They can become conversation starters in that they allow connected participation both internally and externally of the school. Badges work not just for school students 
badges work for teachers too. They work in multiple spaces, in after school programs, summer workshops and in tertiary environments. Once earned, they follow us throughout our lifetime and can be added to college applications and professional resumes. Currently, there are challenges. Providing authentic validated badges requires a certain level of technological understanding. The open badges framework is age restricted and socially there is confusion with other certification systems with what is essentially a new technology. Ongoing there will be confusion. There will be badges that mean nothing but the key is that the learner is in control. They can decide what is important and how they share their badges and in the long run I think our learners will determine what is open, what is valid, and what is legitimized learning, and that that can happen everywhere. And um, that's me, I guess, really. Thank you. All right. Again, can we have um, a big hand for, for Chris? <laughs> well done, Chris. Good timing. Now, um, I like your idea of digital badges and that's also what we do on Teach Meet. You'll be getting your badge that you've presented virtually with us. I'm going to ask my presenters that if you go to the um, Teach Meet NZ uh, website, I know Hannah you've got to get to school so um, just leave when you're ready but the rest who, who have some time and can support us with running a hangout with the team I've got here, um, just go and put your name forward um, on, the, on the document that I have um, on the Teach Meet and Z page where you're all featured. Okay, so I know that um, Chris, Dylan, you said you'd help, mm -hmm. and um, I've got Chris Swanick here who's going to help. And Tim, if you've got some time, that'll be great, and you too, Mel. But if not, that's not a problem. I've probably got enough people now. Okay, so thank you very much. Another big round of applause to our presenters. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I'm in the broadcast now.